Now, Kenyatta University in the same Kiambu County has switched on the first ever phase of a 1.7 billion shilling solar pro uh, project that will see the institution generate its own electricity and offload what is left as excess power onto the national grid. The 100 kilowatt solar plant located at KU's main campus off Thick Road cost an estimated 17 million shillings. It is projected that the entire 10 megawatt project will cost 1.7 billion shillings. The extra power produced in the phase two will be connected to the national grid, helping to generate extra revenue for the institution. Phase one of the plant was developed by France-based solar panel manufacturer Urba Solar uh, through funding from the French government. We feel privileged to have this plant, which will go a long way in supplying some power to the university and at the same time enhance our core mandate of teaching, learning, research and service to community. I'm pleased to note that as a follow-up to this pilot plant, a center of excellence in energy studies will be op operationalized here in Kenyatta University early next year to cater for the training needs of our country and the region. First, when I have a look to this uh, solar panel, my uh, mind travel because, in fact, if we turn our head in the future, the future is here. Because you know, minister like me, then every day, sun give us 8,000 times the energy we need on Earth. 90%, 80 to 90% of our generation is through green energy. And that is the focus for the Kenya government. We are investing a lot in terms of the geo. We put in a lot of resources. There are a lot of power plants which are uh, on pipeline. We are now also putting in a lot of resources in terms of the solar and wind. We are thinking of going like other countries like Mexico and other countries we have done the auction so that we get the best tariff possible and we auction uh, as per uh, categories. So we have not made that decision, but that is the direction we are going in so that we can open the renewables uh, to the uh, private investors. Well, that uh, conversation there is interesting mainly because the conversation has been about how we can take advantage of what is a sustainable and renewable resource, that is the sun, to enable cost savings when it comes to things like heating water, production of electricity, and various other energy requirements. Well, with us in studio to speak into that very conversation is engineer Philip Holly. He is technical director at Davies and Shatliff, and they are experts around the field of water installations, uh, solar pumps, and that kind of thing, and many, many other things that he is going to talk to us about. Karibu sana. Asante. Yeah, so first off, uh, the, the, the reason this is interesting now is because in the year 2012, uh, there were a raft of uh, regulations that were put in place by the uh, Energy Regulatory Commission. That's correct. Uh, which uh, came uh, into force in June last year. Then a moratorium was again given for six months. And this ended recently, as uh, recently as last month. So talk to us about these rules and what they mean for people first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, just to clarify, there, there, there are two sets of rules. Uh -huh. The first one um, required all new houses being built mm -hmm. to have solar water heating um, installed. Mm -hmm. And that came up, that was put in place probably about two, three years ago. Yes. And that's been in place, and all new developers have been complying or trying to comply with that regulation. More recently, and what's, I think, um, more relevant to many homeowners today is, yes. is the second phase of, of the regulations, which require all existing homeowners mm -hmm. using more than 100 liters of hot water a day mm -hmm. to install solar hot water um, systems mm -hmm. in their houses. Mm -hmm. so, so that's basically the So the who will measure, and how is this enforceable? Well, um, the ERC will, I believe, work together with Kenya Power mm -hmm. um, to uh, conduct audits to verify, first of all, um, how much hot water is being used. I, I believe what they're doing is they're, they're looking at the number of rooms at the house. Uh -huh. So if they say anything with more than two bedrooms, mm -hmm. you're more likely to be using more than 100 mm -hmm. liters of hot water a day. Mm -hmm. And therefore, um, compliance will probably be enforced via Kenya Power. Mm -hmm 
who uh, could potentially do several things up to and including disconnecting your power supply. Uh -huh. But it remains to be seen as to exactly how they will enforce. Yes. So even away from the rules and the enforcement, uh, solar power still remains something desirable, something that would enable a lot of Kenyans who use up uh, as much as a third of the energy consumption just to heat water and yeah. that sort of thing. What are the benefits of uh, transferring these sort of energy demand to solar? Right. Well, the ERC regulations, you can think of a, them as the stick. Yes. But the carrot is actually the energy savings that a homeowner would mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. benefit from yes. by installing a solar hot water heater. Mm -hmm. And I, I was working it out the other day. Um, a household with five people um, would use about 150 liters of hot water. The cost of heating that water by electricity is roughly in the region of 30,000 shillings a year. Mm -hmm. Now, installing a sol solar hot water system will g save you 30,000 shillings a year. Mm -hmm. And given that the cost of a hot water system would be between, say, 70 and 100,000 shillings, yes. within three years you've made your money back, mm -hmm. and after that you're, you're basically saving um, and uh, uh, making money. Mm -hmm. uh, so what has the lag been? Because uh, we essentially, even from just a, a cursory look around, a lot of people don't seem to take this seriously enough. Is it lack of knowledge? Is it a simple a ignorance? Or do they just say we are not interested or that sort of thing? Where do you think the challenge is? Well, first of all, I think a lot of people are taking it up and are yes. trying to comply. Mm -hmm. I think the ERC has done a lot in terms of trying to promote awareness. Mm -hmm. What maybe they haven't done so much of, which I would have liked to, seen, to yes. have seen, is um, promotion of the benefits of installing solar hot water. They haven't really come out that strongly in saying mm -hmm. you're going to save money by installing a solar hot water system. Having said that, though, um, I think there, there, there are a variety of reasons why homeowners haven't installed mm -hmm. them. Um, one of them is many houses that people live in are rented. Yes. So you'd be relying on your landlord to pay the money to install a solar hot water system. Mm -hmm. So that's a discussion that has to go in between the tenant and the landlord. Yes. Um, there is... Kenyans are, are famous last minuteers, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that is also affecting it. Mm -hmm. um, but we see a lot more people trying to comply as yes. a business right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, then let's talk about uh, what can be done to help ease this situation. Uh, we've spoken about the carrot that is in the benefits themselves. Uh, well, uh, we do know that government has uh, given uh, either tax rebates or zero rated some of the import, uh, imported equipment. What can still be done to start to incentivize uh, this sort of action? Well. In Kenya, I think the government has done a lot. Um, there is no duty on importing of solar hot water systems, and there's no VAT. So roughly um, what would have cost, uh, say, 100,000 shillings is costing 60, 50,000 shillings yes. as a system. So mm -hmm. the, there would have been 45% duty on the cost of solar hot water systems. Yes. So that's one thing that's been done. Uh -huh. um, the government can look at other countries where um, more interesting incentives have been provided. Yes. For example, in Rwanda, mm -hmm. um, the government was actually paying for the installation of the solar hot water system mm -hmm. and um, looked at implementing a solution where the homeowner or buyer of the solar hot water system would pay um, that, that cost over a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's another example of what could be done. Yes. Um, uh, to incentivize. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, from uh, your perspective as a person who sits at uh, Davis and Shatliff, who have been the pioneers of this uh, in Kenya for a very long time, and uh, from your expert view, what do you think the future holds for solar? In other countries, we've seen uh, people who even at household level are starting to inject back into the grid. Uh, we have seen people who uh, start to do large-scale projects that encompass even the neighbors, even at the water level, and that sort of thing. Where do you see this industry going? Well, I, I think solar energy, renewable energy, uh, we're at a very exciting time in, in uh, solar developments. Mm -hmm. um, we, we look at probably six, seven years ago, the cost of a solar panel was $5 per watt. That's 500 shillings per watt. Yes. Today, the cost of a solar panel is, call it um, 30 US cents mm -hmm. per watt. Mm -hmm. That's out of the manufacturer. Yes. So the price of solar panels, solar PV declining. installations has dropped quite significantly. Mm -hmm. Now, there's, there's a point 
um, that we, we're always looking for in renewable energy, the point at which <coughs> the cost of installing solar systems is lower than the cost of buying it from the grid. Yes. And I think over the last year, we're, we're just about there. The mm -hmm. cost of installing a solar system versus the cost of um, purchasing power from Kenya Power, they're, yes. they're almost at par. At par yes. And that makes it very interesting for the consumer. It, uh -huh. makes, it, it incentivizes them to invest in solar systems. Mm -hmm. um, the government is also looking at a lot of tariffs. Um, net metering is, is one that mm -hmm. could make it interesting for homeowners. Mm -hmm. That was very successful in Germany, yes. where um, actually homeowners could sell power back to the, brid, to the grid mm -hmm. and it essentially run their meters backwards. Yes. Um, so if, if that is implemented in Kenya, and I know a lot of people at very high levels are speaking about it, mm -hmm. that could also drive a much larger scale adoption of solar. Yes. Okay, indeed. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for taking the time to talk to us. Of course, there are various other developments that we can discuss at a later date, including, of course, the fact that these are also solutions that are very key for people who are off-grid. But that, of course, is for a later date. Thank you very much for sure. taking the time to talk to us. Okay. That, of course, has been uh, Engineer Philip Holly. He is Technical uh, Director at uh, Davis and Shatif, a company who have well, been pioneers in the field of water installation, solar installations, and of course that are at the forefront of helping to drive this industry forward in a way that works for both consumers and other stakeholders. Well,